All right. Well, thank you so much, everybody, for joining. Uh, as Jeff said, my name is Monica. I am the head of su customer support here at Quartzy. Um, let me go ahead and get this into my present mode. All right. As long as my screen still looks good, um, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, we will also be recording this webinar so that anybody who missed it will be able to catch up um, with it later and we'll send it to all of you for a reference. Um, yeah, I also want to thank you all for joining so much. Hopefully the information I share today will be um, will help you learn more about all of the management features available to you as a Quartzy Lab admin. So without further ado. Uh, so we'll be talking today about many of the features available to you in Quartzy as an admin. A uh, quick outline, that's going to be the webinar should last about 30 minutes and we'll have plenty of time for questions. I'll pause at different times um, during the webinar. As Jeff said, you can type those into the chat area of the Zoom meeting. Um, and then during those sessions, uh, I'll go ahead and yeah, pause at those times so you can we can answer some questions. So what we'll be talking about today is navigating your account and the certain lab customization options, updating and processing order requests, buying from Quartzy, so that means understanding your payment options and using the shop feature, and finally using the help center to uh, continue to get assistance from the support team. This is going to be posted again later as well, but as a reminder, you can always email us at support at courts.com with any questions um, or for support on anything you really need in the Quartzy platform. All right, so with that, uh, we'll go ahead and start with our live demo portion. So, uh, I want to get started by first orienting you to your account and what you're seeing on the main page when you log in here. You'll notice your profile icon in the top right corner where your personal account settings are located. You also have the link to the Help Center and your cart is located here as well. On the top left side of your toolbar is where your lab selection and module settings appear. There's requests, your digital shopping list where all items that need to be ordered can be tracked, the inventory, your labs list of current, what you currently have in stock, plus where everything is located and any important item data, and the shop. This is the easiest way to find and request the items that you want to order directly from Quartzy. In the top section as well, you have the lab selection. Um, most users may just be in one lab, uh, so that's the lab name that will appear at the top. Other users that are in multiple labs can easily click on that lab name or that arrow and select another lab. That lab is what will be state, that lab will stay selected when you move through your modules. So we're gonna be in the Charles Darwin lab for this demo. Under the lab selection, you're also going to see your lab settings and that's where we're going to get started today. So click on the gear icon here and that'll take us to the settings for the Charles Darwin lab. So this is your manage labs page. I start by selecting the lab name on the left and then the members tab where you can either invite members into your lab or you can also promote members to administrators in the lab as well. We strongly recommend that your lab, um, that in your lab, you always have at least two admins so that if one is temporarily out or leaves the lab, there's a backup admin already selected who can take over management responsibilities. Over in the lab settings tab is for a lot of our general settings. So you'll see things here like your spend tracking code management, inventory editing rights, and selecting your lab's request workflow. An important setting under this tab is the preferred payment method options when buying lab supplies through the shop. These options include credit card checkout, which is you can use your card at checkout and your card will be automatically charged when your orders ship. We also have the purchase order or PO checkout, 
With this option, you can create the PO number and enter the billing and shipping in the cart during the checkout process. An invoice with net 30 terms will be sent once the order ships. And then lastly, we have what we call the other checkout method. This is the best option for labs where a centralized purchasing department or a purchasing person is responsible for sending POs to suppliers. What you might do is submit a requisition to them and they email a PO to us at orders at courtsy.com. Just like with the PO method, invoices are sent once the order ships. And we'll talk, we'll give you more specifics about that buying process later as well. Going back up to the top, we'll look at the other tabs here. So we've got locations where you can set up where items are located. So for example, you can see the minus 20 Celsius freezer here, as well as sublocations. I can click on the box or the pencil icon to edit the items that are found in these sublocations. But in another location, you might have different types of sublocations that are more like benches or shelves. Clicking the pencil icon is also uh, the way that you can edit these. Next, we've got types. This is how you will categorize your items. So we have the standard fields all listed here under this first tab. These are the fields that cross all items in all types that you'll add to your inventory. But if I click the antibody type here, you can see that the custom fields um, are different. These can be edited for this type in particular. I can edit the individual fields who are, that are already in here or delete them by clicking the X. And if I scroll all the way down to the bottom, I can add more custom fields here. Next, we've got the vendors tab, where you can see a list of all the vendor names used in either the requests or the inventory module for your lab. And you can add URL um, and contact inf information. While this is a good reference tool, it is not a section where you can select which vendors members of your lab can or cannot request from. Members can enter requests for any supplier, no matter if they appear on this list or not. Next, we've got backups. We strongly recommend receiving this monthly spend reports, where an email will be sent to you with an Excel file containing the details of all of the requests that were submitted within the past month and either weekly or monthly inventory backups, which will have an Excel file and all of the inventory item details at that point in time, in case there are any accidental deletions or changes and you want to restore an earlier version of the inventory, this is going to be a great resource for you to have. And then lastly, we have our addresses. So keep track of all of your lab's billing and shipping addresses to make checkout even faster. All right, so that is a good kind of point for me to pause there now that we've gone over all of the lab settings. Were there any questions that came in um, through the chat that anybody would like me to answer at this time? Or Jeff, was there anything that came in? No questions yet, Monica. If you do have questions, folks, just uh, put them into the uh, chat window and uh, we'll get to them uh, accordingly. All right, well, I will go ahead and keep going. Again, as your questions come up, just go ahead and throw them in the chat box and we'll kind of get to them if they're a good stopping or when we get to our next stopping point. All right, so to get out of my Manage Labs area, I'm going to click on the Q logo at the top left and this is going to return us to the request table where we're going to look at more processing, uh, processing requests and placing orders. Um, so let's dive deeper into this request module. As I mentioned earlier, this is your lab's digital shopping list. Requests for any and all items that need to be purchased can be tracked here. Whether or not the purchasers for those items will go through Quartzy. So the add request button here is going to be the best place to start when something needs to be ordered. So let's start there. 
Members may have the exact vendor and catalog number ready if they know what they want or what they need and they can or they can enter any keyword or phrase like for example a 50 mil tube uh, to search and see the following options so we've got results under our previous requests options to purchase through the quartzy shop items from the inventory module and options from other suppliers outside vendors hey monica as you're going through this section there was a question that came in can you change information after being ordered received or inventoried yes there is absolutely um, the ability to edit item details after items have been requested or added to the inventory. Um, I should be able to get to that once we have a new request. I'll get into the editing options. Yep. So once you found the item that you want to request, you can click the request button here and that will add the item into the new section of the request table, just like this. So the status navigation bar up here is front and center. The idea being that you select a status and see only the requests that you're interested in or need to take action on. So let's look at the requests that we have here in the new section. So this is where you view the list of all newly submitted requests. Clicking on the lab name is what opens up the item details panel. It slides over from the right here and this is where you can view and edit those details. For example, I could edit the price here to reflect what you pay, and you can see that that information gets automatically saved. You can edit all of the other request detail fields from here as well by either scrolling or clicking on these headings here to take you quickly to the section you need. You can close the details panel by either clicking on this arrow at the top left here or simply just click outside of the panel. Notice the numbers in the status tabs here. There are four in new and we also have four in the ordered status. So let's say some time has passed and this item that was requested has been ordered, I'll go ahead and, or after this request was submitted, I went ahead and placed this order. So to let my lab know that this item has been ordered, I will click the mark ordered button. Save that there, and you'll see that these numbers change. So we go from three in new, and then over to five in the ordered area. So now, <laughs> after some time has passed. Uh, this item may have been delivered into the lab. And what I wanna do is I want to mark this as received to let the lab know that this item has come in. So I'll click mark received. And in this area here, I will choose to add this item to the inventory. And I will go ahead and select the location where this item will be stored in that module. We'll get to the inventory module in just a minute, but I'll save this. And finally, that item gets moved from the ordered status into the received status. And this is where you can see your lab's entire order history as well. You can easily click request again to select when items need to be reordered, and then that item would get added back into the new section and you'd start that process over again. You also have the all request status where to see everything or click the arrow to filter by multiple statuses at one time. That would include the other statuses not listed here, which would be canceled and backordered. You can click the checkbox next to an item and see all of the options in this top bar. Request again as well can be found here. Bulk update statuses, group under a PO number, create a requisition form, export to Excel or to a CSV file, and finally you can permanently delete some requests. 
Monica, another question just came in. Yeah. Uh, is there a way to edit an item that uh, is been back ordered so that you can mark it back ordered? Oh yeah, absolutely. That would be, let me go over to the ordered status. So if you find out that one of your items is back ordered, you would change that status over here under this more option. So clicked on the item name, I went to my editing panel, and that's where you'll find the mark back ordered. Um, that's also another place where you can cancel the request and a couple other options under here. All right, so the last section over here in the request module is on this left sidebar. We have our search and filtering area. So this will really help you to narrow down the results. Um, so you only see, again, what you care about in this area. So you can filter by vendor, requester, grant ID, as well as type. You can filter for also just the items that were ordered or requested from Quartzy. And then we have a general search box, so you can search for whatever you'd like to here. All right, so that was another kind of stopping point I had now that we've gone through everything in the request module. We haven't talked about ordering yet, but anything else that came up about requests? No other questions. Perfect, then we will go ahead and head into the inventory module. So you'll notice that this page looks quite similar to the request module with rows going all the way across the page so you can view all the information you want to about your items. You can customize the columns by clicking the gear icon here and adding other columns that you'd like to view, like price, for example. Sorry, Monica, there was one last question that just sure. came in. Um, can you receive a partial order? You absolutely can. That will involve, so you would only want to, or most likely only want to receive a partial order if you've ordered more than one item. Um, so when you click mark received, there will be an option for you to edit the quantity that was received. So actually, I think that'll work, yep. <laughs> so I wouldn't do that in this case because I only ordered one of these, but if I ordered two, let's say, and only one of them came in, I would just change that quantity received to one, I would click partial delivery, and then it would just be that one pack that gets added into the inventory. And this item would still remain in the ordered area with just one unreceived item that I could then go back when that item comes in and mark received again as the entire quantity. Yeah, great question. Sorry, I'm not, I'm not sure I understand this question. I'm going to ask it anyway. It, okay. uh, it is, what is existing item and add as new uh, item? Yeah, so once you start using your inventory more and building it up based on the items that you've marked as received from the request area, you're going to end up starting to see both of these options. So update existing item means that the item that you requested and you want to add into the inventory already exists in the inventory. So what you might wanna do here is you might wanna change that amount in stock to reflect what should be added potentially to that existing inventory. So it could be you already had one of these items and you ordered two. So you would change that amount to three, that would update the existing item that you had in there from having a quantity of one to that full quantity after the new order came in to three. The add as new item would mean that you know you could do it in this case as well if you wanted to have a couple different versions of this item or maybe you're saving this item in, in a different location so you want to add this as a new item that is different from the other one so this item would be in the biosafety cabinet and you'd want to distinguish it from the item that you already had in the inventory if you're new and kind of start starting to build up your inventory you're most like you're only going to be seeing this add as new item most of the time um, but yeah, you'll start to see update existing once you start using Quartzy more. All right, good questions. Okay. So back in the inventory, we were talking a little bit more about the column headers that you can edit to keep track of the information or see in your one view what you have in your inventory. 
And then you have very similar filters and search that you do in the request module there, but they're a bit different. So in the inventory, we have different filter options where we have location, type, vendor, and owner. If I want to filter by type, let's say the chemical type, I may also want to customize my columns that appear here. And I do that the same way. I click on this gear icon and I can select specifically from those custom fields that I have for my chemical type that I wanna see here. You just need to make sure that you first filter by that type in order to see these options. And then and, I will- um, Another question came in. Mm -hmm. um, is there a way other than making a note to indicate that the order is ready to be placed? Sometimes they'll have multiple people added to their list and sometimes they need to check with the PI before giving the please go to order approval. A good way to do that. So what I don't have right here is the approval step. That is an option that you can select in your lab settings. If between new and, and ordered, you add an approval step. So any admin can go in and instead of clicking here, what would be mark ordered, they would click a button that says approve. So anything that's in that, the approved status would be a good indication based on your lab's workflow if that item is ready to be ordered. The other option that you might consider is using the comment section. So the comments are a really great way to communicate with other members of your lab about specific orders that need to be made. You can use this at feature to call out specifically other members of your lab that may need to take action on this or you have a question for them. You could just at them in here and they'll get a notification in their app as well as in an email if you had any questions or to say to the ordering admin, hey, this is ready to be ordered. You could do that in the comments is a great way. Okay, so back in the inventory area, we've got those uh, search and filter options that we were looking through. If I add any new filters here, I can very easily clear those and get them out of the way to go back to my original state of my inventory. Editing items in the inventory module work the same way as in requests. All I have to do is click on the item name here and the editing panel opens up on the right. This makes it super easy for members in the lab when they notice, for example, that amount in stock field is maybe running low. They can edit it and that information immediately saves. And they can also use this request button to request the items that need to be ordered again. So that can definitely be done kind of in tandem. You mark it down to zero. And then if this needs to be ordered again, you add it as a request and it links that back to the new area of the request module. Hey, Monica, can you merge duplicate chemicals or materials in the inventory? We don't have a specific way to merge. So usually what I would recommend somebody do if they found that they're ending up with multiple items is a couple different ways. You might just sort by the item name. This would be a really good way to surface any duplicates that have the exact same name. And similarly, if I wanted to copy this catalog number, search for it in here, this would also show me if I have any duplicate items here. So I might use these um, to let me know, okay, I've got three instances of this, but I don't need these two. So I might delete these items and update the quantity for just the one item that I wanna keep in the inventory. So that's probably the best way that you're gonna be able to kind of surface those duplicates. Great, thanks for that. There was uh, another question that came in uh -huh. uh, about um, a Quartzy app available for iPhones uh, to be that it would be extremely helpful receiving uh, purposes. And yeah. um, just to let everybody know, we are working on an app and we'll have an update uh, for you shortly when that will be released uh, in the uh, coming weeks. Yeah, so currently what we do have is if you go to Quartzy on your mobile browser, 
it will, the page will change. The page is reactive. It knows that you're on a mobile device or a, la or a tablet. Um, so the page will look a bit different than it does actually here on the full web version. Um, so some of that is interactive, but yeah, just like Jeff said, we, we definitely see a lot of um, benefits to having more of that mobile interaction um, in the lab, moving around, uh, going through and receiving things and adding requests. So hopefully that's something we'll have some good news about soon. One more question on the inventory. If, uh, if materials are automatically updated when used, for example, if they have a 500 mil bottle and they use uh -huh. 100 mil, will it update the quantity? So that is going to be just the same as updating any quantity. It will have to be done by somebody in the lab going to the amount in stock field. So if you're using up some of this item, there's 10 units of this here, I use a bottle, you could change that quantity there. What I didn't uh, point out yet here is that you do have the option to get really detailed into those units. So if you are keeping track of, for example, how many mills you have of something, you can change the numbers here to really customize what, whether it's the quantity of items that you have or quantity based on volume or weight, that's an option you have there, but it still needs to be updated manually um, by the person who's interacting with Portsy. One other question that just came in, how does the serial number work if you add to an existing versus new item when adding to inventory? That's a great question because this is really what identifies this as a unique item in your inventory. So one of the things I was just gonna talk about, oh no. We required fields, <laughs> great option when you wanna make sure that the members of your lab can't edit an item um without entering some important information so that's the pop-up that just came for me here now that i've entered that information i can close that panel um, but what i was going to say is yeah with those serial numbers which is also a column that i can add over here if we want to look at the serial numbers these are all unique anytime you add a new item to your inventory whether you use this add item button which i was going to say um, is if you're adding something to the inventory outside of that mark received process that you would be doing in the request module no matter how you add a new item to the inventory we will automatically create a unique serial number that identifies that item so when we were talking about that update existing item that you would do when you mark an item as received in the request area, this is how it identifies which item is going to be updated. It's going to be the exact item that's linked to the request that you're updating. So we, update, we create these serial numbers for you and they also cannot be edited. These are static. Um, it's how we know that you have unique items in the inventory. Another question about uh, what's the best way to order an item when the vendor's not affiliated with Quartzy? Track yeah. it in inventory? So there's a couple different options that you might use there. Um, if you are, if you have those items in your inventory, you can request items directly from here. So whatever vendor or catalog number you're using to keep track of that item in your inventory, when I request this item from here, Let's just go ahead and do that and I'll walk you through that process. Um, this is that inventory item and I'll go ahead and request it. When it gets added over to the requests new area, it's going to show those same vendor catalog number details. Since this item is not set, and I haven't gone to this section yet, so maybe I should wait. <laughs> Since this item is not set as a quartzy item, the order that you place for this item would have to be outside of Quartzy. That's when Quartzy really turns into the communication tool for your lab, where you may be ordering this item through your regular system. You might go directly to Sigma. You might submit a requisition form to a purchasing person. Um, that order would be done outside of Quartzy, which is why this button here is mark ordered rather than checkout. Checkout is what you would use for those internal orders that you place for Quartzy items, as opposed to the ones you would just nor order this item however you normally would. And that is the next section I was going to be getting to. So any last questions anybody had about the inventory before I kind of wrap that up here? 
it's not related to inventory, but it, it is orthogonally. Somebody just found the backup option and noticed okay. that it's already set up for two of their three labs. However, they're not receiving those backup emails. And the question is, who does the backup go to and how do I get the backup reports emailed to them? Okay, that could be something that I want to take a closer look at. I can um, reach out to you after this, or if you want to send an email to support at, I can um, get your information and we can see maybe it's not set up to go to the right person, um, or maybe it's not getting through to your email. So I can look at that uh, on a one-off basis with you after this. But yeah, I definitely want to have the backups. It is a great option. All right, so, um, now that I have gone through all of the just regular requests, I've gone through lab settings, I've got to inventory, let's go ahead and talk about that buying process. So I'm going to go over here to the shop. And again, the shop is a really great place to start when you want to browse through the millions of supplies that we have available to buy directly from Quartzy. Quartzy works with top lab supply manufacturers and distributors to ship directly to your lab. We also currently have two warehouses. One is located in the San Francisco Bay Area, and then another one is on the East Coast, which allows us to very quickly ship supplies out to you from those warehouses in usually just one to two days. So searching the shop can be as specific as a catalog number or a cast number, or as general as a type of item. So let's try centrifuge tube. You can select from important attributes based on that search and the items that show up in that search over here on the left sidebar. So for example, if I only want to see sterile items, I will click the sterile attribute and it will up update my results. If there are multiple unit size options available for that item, I need to add an S here to see the option I'm looking for. Um, if there's multiple unit size options available, that will show up here. So I can quickly click from the 300 case option to the 500 case option. Oh, where did that go? And it will update the unit price for me where I can add this item then to my cart. Um, You can also view the delivery estimates right from here, and then click either the request or the add to cart option. Both choices will result in a new request being added to the lab. Using the add to cart option um, simply results in, a, in fewer clicks. So going back to the request table here, you'll notice the orange Quartzy logo under this request, indicating that this is a Quartzy item that's ready to go through the checkout process. These other requests do not have the Quartzy logo. However, this one has a quote available. I can click on see quote to learn more about the option um, to buy this specific item from Quartzy. The check icon indicates that this quote is for the exact same item that was requested. So if I click accept quote, this turns that item into a Quartzy item, and then I can take that through the checkout process in the cart. Or let's say someone accepted a quote, but you decide that you'd prefer to buy that item through the supplier directly. So that was kind of the instance we were talking about before. If somebody accepted a quote, but you choose not to buy that from Quartzy, I can click on the item name, see original request, and just switch that back. That way that item shifts back to a non-Quartzy item and I'll go about purchasing this item directly from the manufacturer that's listed. And that would be again done outside of Quartzy. So when you're ready to place that order, you're going to go to the cart and complete the checkout process. 
For those of you who want to use the other payment method that I talked about earlier, where a purchasing department is placing the order, make sure to check out this feature in the cart. This is the print a quote option. A PDF will be generated with the exact pricing when buying this item through Quartzy or the multiple items. Uh, and you can submit that along with your requisition if your purchasing department or purchasing de per, uh, person needs that information. On that payment method, this ch orange checkout button is gonna change to an orange mark ordered button um, since you don't actually need to complete the checkout flow through Quartzy, what you'll do there is you're just going to send us the PO via email and then we'll process the order that way for you. Either way, whether you're sending us a PO or you're going to be checking out through the cart, I always recommend that you check out this see details area. This is how you can see the exact shipping and handling charges on an order. As a note, all orders over $199 will receive free standard shipping, but there may still be other types of shipping or special handling fees. So make sure to look here before submitting your requisition to purchasing or clicking checkout. So you really understand what all those fees may be in this area. And we'll even tell you how far you are away from that free standard shipping. So. I added $18, that $8 fee would go away. So I think um, before this webinar, somebody had submitted a question about sales tax exemption. So if your organization is exempt from sales tax, all you need to do is email us a copy of your exemption certificate and we can get that updated on our end. So then this estimated tax would not show up on your side, depending on what your organization's um, tax exemption status is. So that can be sent to us at support at courtsy.com. If I click on the queue here, that's going to take us back to the request table. Um, after all of your orders have been placed, you can view them over here in the purchase history. So this is also where invoices will be available for you to download. So those would show up right here under the invoice section and will be a clickable link with the invoice number where you can download the invoice. So remember that Quartzy, for all of the items that show up in your purchase history, we would be the supplier for all those items ordered. So you can reach out directly to us with any questions that you have about order status or if there is an issue with an item once it arrives. And that brings us to the end of the live demo portion. Are there any final questions that anybody has about anything they've seen so far? One just came in. Um, is there a way to archive inventory items or should they be deleted? That is a, another great question. So in the inventory, we don't currently have an archive feature. So a couple of things that I generally recommend to somebody who's looking to archive. The first thing is that if you no longer have that item in your inventory, definitely make sure that amount in stock is reduced. So you want to know and make sure everybody else knows in the lab that you have zero left of that item. The other option that you might consider is adding, instead of the location being where that item normally is housed, you could create a new location, and I don't think I added one in here, but you could create a new location that is called archived, for example. So that way, when you're looking through your items and you see that the location is archived or out of stock or kind of whatever language works for your lab, um, you would know that that item is not currently you know, being used, um, or maybe you don't want to order it any longer. It's a, uh, you know, it's tips for a pipetter that you're not using anymore. Um, that's a good way that you could kind of work around that process. Instead of archiving it and removing it, you would just change that location. And then you might even kind of take that next step of whenever you wanted to see items that weren't archived, you could filter by the items that are in the non-archived location. So if I just want to see everything that's in my chemical cabinet, this would not show me any of the archived chemicals that you had. 
Mark, another question came in about even if an item is not a quartzy item from our fulfillment center, mm -hmm. can they reach out to us about issues, for example, glassware that comes in and is broken? That would be something if you did not order the item from us, you would want to reach out direct to the supplier that you ordered that item from. That could be a good opportunity, depending on who's doing the actual ordering in the lab. That might be another good place where you can use this comments feature. So you might, um, so if you're the admin, uh, but somebody else actually placed the order, you might reach out to them through the comments to ask about who to reach out to, um, or if it is a member of your lab who did the receiving and got that potentially broken item, if there's something wrong with it, they could reach out to you through the comments um, to get that information. But yeah, if it was not ordered from Quartzy, the best way to tell that is the lack of the orange Quartzy logo here. So if it does have the orange Quartzy logo, that would be an item ordered from us. If it doesn't, then go ahead and reach out directly to that supplier and they'll be able to help you with fulfillment issues. Great question came in, user versus admin. Yep. Does, does the view change what you can see or just what can be approved and moved? Is anything hidden from view for a normal user? It changes slightly, but not very much. The overall page layout is going to be pretty much exactly the same. What is going to change will be some of the action buttons. The members in a lab, they cannot order or they cannot click mark ordered, nor can they check out. What they would see here is just kind of a status waiting. It would be a submitted status or it would be an ordered status. Um, they won't be able to take those action steps. But other than that, um, for example, so this is the requester here, Sophia, if they are just a member in this lab, they could only edit this request before it gets ordered. Once that item goes into the ordered status, members of the lab have limited editing privileges. Is there a limit to how many people can access the inventory or request materials? There is not. You can add over here in your lab settings, you could add as many members and promote to as administrators as you like. Great. A um, couple of questions came in on the same topic about um, export requested materials uh, into an Excel sheet. Mm. And I think is a general question about just uh, importing spreadsheets into Quartzy. So both, both directions, can yeah. they import and can they export? Yeah, I did skip over that section a little bit, but yeah, I'll go back to that over here. You can do it in both the request and inventory, but the inventory is sometimes a more common place where you might be doing more importing the exporting keeping track of what you have in here so you have two buttons down here you have the export button and you have the import button so importing will give you the option to download Quartzy's excel import template where you could copy and paste all of your item details if you are keeping track of it in google sheets or you already have an excel spreadsheet that you're keeping track of just copy and paste that information onto our template and then when you're ready upload that file into here and it will add all of those items into your inventory. Then there's the other option where maybe you want to make some bulk changes to the set of inventory you already have. Um, in this example, I'm already filtered by items in a certain location. So if I export, I could choose to just export those filtered items and then make changes on that Excel file save those changes, and then go back to the import module and import those changes back. Um, so that's a really good way if you have, yeah, a, built, a bulk change that you wanna do, for example, like with those archived items that we were talking about, if you wanted to move items from one location to another all at once, you could use a feature like this where you export and import. So you do wanna make sure you're using our template if you're going to add a bunch of items to your inventory. Um, and if you want to edit and add items, you would just export first and then import changes. So yeah, so you can do that as well in the requests. Um, you do not have the same functionality with inventory. I cannot export and import changes in bulk in the request module, but I can export for my records and I can import an order history. So slight changes in the modules there. Um, but you still have those same options to either import in bulk or export. Another question on inventory. If, uh, if you have 12 bottles of a chemical, how do you know which one has an expiration or lot number that goes mm. with it? And they'd like to try to avoid having to duplicate an item yep. 12 times to keep the data accurate. Yep. 
that is a, a great question too. So you have a couple options here. Depending on what type you've added that item to, you might have, let's see if this one does. Um, you might have a field where you're keeping track of lot number. What you would need to do in this case is, if you have 12 of that item, the best way to really keep track of one item having one lot number and differentiating that from another item that has a different lot number is you would want to probably have multiple instances of that item. It's not the best option um, and it is something that I believe is already on the feature request list for our product development team to look at is really finding a better way to do that. So instead of having to what you would do here is I could click this checkbox and I could duplicate all of the information about this item and then I would just change that one field whether it's the expiration date or it's the lot number and that would be the best way to help me distinguish between those different items with different information. So it does result in multiple items in your inventory but is the best way to keep track of the unique information for those items. Any last questions? Um, sorry, there was one that just yep. came through. <laughs> what information does the QR code provide? Mm, I did add that in here. So um, print QR code is one of the features that you might have under when you select the checkbox here. Uh, you may need to reach out to us if you want this feature activated for your account. So if you don't see it and you are interested, please just let me know. Um, this will allow you to print QR code labels or tags that you could use in your stock room, put on items that you want to request again. With a QR code reader, you could read that QR code that we generated and it will open up the add request form. Like most likely you're going to be using a mobile app for this. So you would use your camera, scan the QR code, and it would automatically take you to the mobile version of Quartzy where you can request that item. That sounds like a part of a new feature of mobile app. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's, it's getting us there. It's getting us closer to more of that full functionality we really want to have. Um, in that more mobile environment. So if you don't have that feature or interested in it, please let me know and we can kind of, we can get that activated and I can tell you more about it. Um, but yeah, that's what that feature is there. But we want to do more. We want to do more. All right, so just to quickly wrap things up, I do want to be conscious of time. Um, Check your email after the webinar as a thank you. We will be sending you a promo code for a free Quartzy bottle. Um, you can find all of the instructions on using the features on Quartzy in our online help center. Um, feel free to email us at either of these addresses, support at Quartzy.com as well as orders at Quartzy.com. Both of those will get to our fantastic support team, um, but the orders one, is generally a good one to use. It's kind of our uh, one that's specific to if you have a question about um, an order through Quartzy. The support team is available um, by phone and by email from 7 a.m. Uh, to 4 p.m. Pacific time. And that's where we can be reached on the phone. Um, I will stick around for a couple more minutes if anybody has any last questions. So feel free to hang out and Jeff can feed me those questions. Otherwise, Thank you all so much for attending today. Hopefully this demo will make your transition to an admin a little bit easier and I hope everybody has a great rest of their day. <laughs>